This is the series behind four haunting photos of the Vietnam War by this Mangosteen. Has been shared by Trade Tech on SpiderRoom.com. You can see the link to the original article in the description. In the period before 1975, haunting pictures of the war in Vietnam were continuously transmitted and shook the whole world. Let's take a look at four of the most iconic photos, carrying with them unforgettable historical stories. Welcome to Spider Room, and here's the post behind four Vietnam War photos written by Trey Detection. My name is Donald Trump, and this is one of four haunting photos of the Vietnam War. Photo Napong Girl, 1972. June 1972, in a small village in Trang Bang, Tay Ninh, 40 kilometers northwest of Saigon. This is a strategic village where the arterial road connecting Saigon and Phnom Penh runs through. Therefore, it was the site of fierce competition for control between the forces of the Republic of Vietnam and the Liberation Army, Viet Cong. Three days ago, little girl Kim Phu's family took refuge, his family took refuge in a high temple to avoid fierce fighting. That day, on June 8, when hearing the sound of the Republic of Vietnam's aircraft roaring in the sky, fearing that the barn room would be bombed, Kim Phuc and the people hiding there rushed out. At that moment, a plane swooped down, dropping four napalm bombs on the fleeing crowd. Fire broke out everywhere. Two babies died, the remaining children, suffering from burning bombs, ran and cried along, ran and cried along Highway 1, now National Highway 22 towards Saigon. At that time, a foreign newspaper and television reporter was present and worked. However, only one photo was selected to go down in history. The photograph of Nick Ott, a 21. The Herald War correspondent then became one of the most influential war photographs of the 20th century. Kim Phuc is a naked girl running in the middle of the photo. The terrible heat of the napalm bomb made the girl tore off the remaining clothes to cool down, running and screaming, too hot, too hot, too hot, on the leftist Fuchs brother, who lost an eye in this case. Surrounded by siblings, the soldiers of the Republic of Vietnam walked lazily behind. Not far away, only bombs and bullets could be seen. The geel, like liquid, squirts out, clings to and ignites anything it sticks to, with tremendous heat ranging from 800 to 1200 degrees Celsius. For comparison's sake, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Eyewitnesses recounted that, at that time, every piece of fuck skin was peeled off. Reporters gave her water to drink and poured some other water bottles over her. Then Nick uh, took the children to a hospital in Kuchin. I'll probably die. Duck repeated with his brother. The girl fainted along the way. The influence of the image. Initially, the uh, P News Agency, where Nick got work, was hesitant to release the photo because of the nude image. But Hortfast, the head of the photo editing department, recognized the importance of the photo and was determined to release it. Soon after, the picture made the front page of the New York Times and newspapers around the world, creating a new tsunami. It immediately became a symbol of the anti-war movement and prompted the U.S. to rush to negotiate a withdrawal. Nine months later, the Paris Agreement was signed. American troops completely withdrew from South Vietnam, which inevitably resulted in the fall of Saigon two years later. The U.S. president's reaction when he saw the photo, President Nixon did not believe it was real and asked, is it a collage? Possibly his mentor replied, in fact, photos and field footage have proven this is completely real. It can be said that what was initiated by the image of the execution in Saigon more than four years ago has been completed by the photo of a napalm girl. Of course, it is difficult to conclude that the U.S. withdrawal was entirely due to the photos, but it is undeniable that the immense pressure these photos caused within the United States. To this day, many American veterans still justify losing not in the jungles of Southeast Asia, but at home. Nick, its brother, was also a uh, P reporter who died on the battlefield. Little it recounted, my brother always said many years ago that he wanted to end this war. He hated war. One day he hoped I would take a picture to end the war. When I took a picture of Kim Phuc running, that picture ended the war. 
With third degree burns covering more than half of her body, only luck will help her survive. After 14 months of treatment with 17 surgeries, she was discharged from the hospital and returned to her small village. Fortunately, Kim Fuck did not burn his face, so when he put on his clothes, no one saw. However, the girl still carries in her a feeling of ugliness and disability. In addition, the burns were still painful and the mental trauma was still tormenting the psyche of the little girl who was just over 10 years old. But then life goes on. The years in the hospital made her dream of becoming a doctor. Later, she passed the entrance exam to a medical school and transferred to study in Ho Chi Minh City. In 1982, she converted from chaotism to Catholicism. Later, Kim Fox said that it was an important turning point in her life. God taught her how to forgive and let go of hatred, the hardest lesson she gradually learned. But life did not let her live so quietly. That same year, a German journalist went to Vietnam to look for the girl in the picture. He found and wrote an article about her. Since then, domestic media agencies began to look to Kim Fuse. She became a propaganda symbol of American imperialist crimes. Continuous interviews, reportage, documentary filming made the girl too bored. Even Kim Fox said that she was monitored by security to control. She had to drop out of school. In 1986, Kim Fox was sent to study pharmacy in Cuba. Here, she met international student B.I. Dituan. In 1992, they got married and went on vacation in Moscow, Russia. On the way back, when the plane stopped to refuel Newfoundland, Canada, the couple decided to leave their luggage, leave the plane, and not return. Plane taking off. The two then applied to immigrate to Canada under political asylum and were approved. With the help of local people, the young couple settled down. In 1996, on Veterans Day, she was invited to speak in front of thousands of American veterans at the Vietnam War Memorial Wall, Washington, D.C. Here, she recounts her life story, tells about her experiences, and expresses her desire to close the past to build a peaceful future together. She later founded the Kim Foundation with the goal of helping children who are victims of conflicts in 1994, she became a goodwill ambassador for the United Nations. The girl in the picture, Denise Chong's biography of Kim Fuss, written in 1999, was shortlisted for a literary award in Canada, who ordered the bombing. On the same day, 1996 American Veterans Day, an American veteran, Mr. John Plummer, asked to meet Kim Fuss, confessing in tears that he was the one who ordered the South Vietnamese pilots to throw a bomb and ask for forgiveness. This sparked the anger of many other American veterans who always thought that the battle that day was between the Vietnamese. The Americans had nothing to do with it. They asserted that Plummer was then just a low-ranking officer who had absolutely no authority to order such things. Later, Plummer corrected that his job at that time was to relay information from an American advisor on the battlefield to another American official because this official passed the information to the South Vietnamese official. While the, the decision to drop the bomb was made by the Republic of Vietnam and it was true that he felt guilty and asked to release it, not just acting for fame. Currently, Kim Phuc is living happily with his family in Canada. Her face exuded the benevolence of someone who had overcome and transformed herself from wounds. As for Nick Ott, the photo brought him to the pinnacle of glory with the most prestigious awards in the world when he was only 22 years old. Of 10 journalists who have won Pulitzer Prizes for photographs or reportage on the Vietnam War, only he and one other person are still alive. Currently, he lives in Los Angeles, still works for the uh, uh, P News Agency, and is in regular contact with Kim Fu. And that's the story of one of four photos of the Vietnam War. Hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to support Spider Room and ViDub AI. And if you like the above content, please log in to Spider Room to read more. Goodbye and see you again. I'm Donald Trump.